Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to another Fish for Thought video. I'm your host, Chris, and today we're gonna get it. Remember the speed run we did, the aquascaping speed run a few videos ago on this tank sent by Buse Plant and all the equipment, all the high quality equipment sent by Buse Plant as well. Well, today we're gonna finish it up. Not to say that it wasn't complete last time. It was now that the speed run, the purposes of the speed run is over, I wanna polish it up. I wanna add some plants, but not go overboard with it. So we're gonna keep it to a species plant tank. I do have some ideas on what I'm going to stock it with, but I haven't decided 100% yet. Feel free to leave your guesses in the comments below and see if you're right. The reason why I don't want it to be too planted up and overboard with plants is because I still want the hardscape, the magnificent Seiru Strata V2 to be the main attraction of this scape. And yeah, we're going to take this scape. This is not actually where I want the scape to remain. I want to take it up to my room. That's just how much I enjoy this scape. I want it in my room, beside my bed. Just wake up to it every morning. Are we still talking about the fish tank or? So yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. There's a perfectly empty little spot here in the corner of my room upstairs. It is adjacent to a window but does not get much direct sunlight. This is important as you may know how particular I am about not using natural light on aquariums. Man, this tank is looking so fresh, not gonna lie. I have the beautiful twin star light and we got it going on now. Sometimes I feel like just leaving it like this would be very aesthetic, you know, just like for interior decor, but of course we can't just leave it bare like that. We gotta add the plants and water and livestock. So here we go. I mentioned that this is gonna be a single plant species tank and I chose Hydrocado tripartita var Japan. It's such a delicate and intricate looking plant, but at the same time, don't be fooled, this is one of the hardier and faster growing species in the hobby. Many people even grow it immersed and it grows super well that way, so I might give it a try too in the future. Man, this tank does look clean. She's a looker, all right. Guys, if you haven't heard my new rap yet, you've been missing out. Well, here it is. Saran Wrap. That's right, the mighty wrap that's been protecting aquascapes since 1832. Don't sleep on Saran Wrap, guys. Best wrap out there when it comes to shielding your carefully laid out scape from water damage. Of course, in my case, this was scaped in three minutes, so I guess it's not protecting that much. Here's some water ASMR for y'all. Man, you guys are weird. Depending on my mood on the day, filling up a fish tank may be my least favorite part of it all. It's cause I use this weird little water sprout thing and it takes forever, and my back ends up hurting every time. Why don't I just invest in better equipment? Because I love pain and suffering. Life has just been too easy on me, apparently. The struggle to find a job part, or the hell the hell am I going to afford moving out part wasn't enough for me, I guess. Now, before we plant our hydrocado, we have to clear the roots of this brown doo-doo spongy substance. I swear they need to find a better way to store these plants. Nothing feels worse than trying to clear this thing away and feeling your fingers accidentally tearing the beautiful, healthy roots. Maybe this is my least favorite part. Wow, when did this video get so complainy? Jeez. One part I don't hate about a new scape would definitely be the oxygen lines holding onto the surfaces. You tap on it a little bit and a billion bubbles start floating up. It's super satisfying. Try it next time if you haven't already. I googled it once why this actually happens, but of course I forgot what the explanation was. I think it was, um, science. Hydrocado going in. For the planting, I just want to loosely secure the plant around the Seiru strata so that it takes root and grows around by itself. The flow is not going to be that strong in here anyway, so I doubt they'll start floating. Now that I've been handling this plant for a while, it actually feels and smells like cilantro. I have this real big urge to scrunch it into a little ball and start cutting it up to throw on some rack of lamb for dinner. Hopefully I don't give in to those urges. No promises though. And you already know, Salvinia minima and SP into that tank. I live and breathe for floating plants. By the way, if you didn't know what SP stands for in scientific nomenclature, it just stands for species. It's just scientists being lazy and going through the easy way of naming things when they know the genus of the thing but not sure about the species. In this case, I'm using it because I'm not sure what species and subspecies of Salvinia is in here because there's more than one. Look, a ram's horn snail. <laughs> Every single time. How did that happen? This is not a small snail. How did they get in here without me knowing? These guys are ninjas like Hidden Leaf Village Jonin. Look at this cool shot. Cilantro looking on point. Okay, now I can't unsee it. I feel like I just ruined Hydrocado Tripartita for my 
myself and maybe ruined it for you too. Hey, you should be thanking me. I'm saving you money from getting more. Here's the slim flow filter. Pretty slim, much flow, slim flow. Look at me trying to water my aquatic plants. Someone tell them, that's not how it works, buddy. I forgot the lid. Sorry, man, how could I? This is unforgivable. Okay, damn, it's been a few weeks. That's movie magic for ya. The Salvinia completely took over, so I'ma have to clean it up a little bit, take out the submerged ones and browning ones, because when plants start dying and breaking down, that also affects the water parameters. Okay, it's been a month since the initial setup. Yes, the uploading dates from that video and this video may be only a couple weeks apart, but that's because I pre-scheduled a lot of stuff. Your boys organize like that, know what I mean? But as you can probably see, things aren't going all that swell up in here. There's like a few different not so joyous things happening all at once. There's brown diatoms, a slight bacteria bloom on the hardscape and substrate. There's my arch nemesis hair algae showing up to the party, but also this very soft greenish algae growing all over the hydrocodal, and I hate that the most. So I went to grab my toothbrush. It's time to get down and dirty with it. It's like I always say, you gotta become one with your fish tank. And if that means sharing a toothbrush from time to time, so be it. Man, that's nasty. Definitely gonna get a few cavities here and there. Let's do a little water change. Suck up all the precipitate that we just stirred up. So naturally, I'm going to adjust my lights timer down an hour, and at the same time, I'll start including a blackout day on Sundays. You know, Sunday is rest day for all of us, and that includes Mr. Timer here. Gotta enjoy the Sabbath. But that's not all, I'm not done. This tank finished cycling a long time ago, and I'm enlisting the help of these awesome Amano shrimp. The algae will be softened by the reduced lighting hours and blackout days, and the hungry hungry Amanos will go to town. The trick here is to underfeed these guys, so that they will turn to demolishing the algae. Believe it or not, shrimp are pretty picky little critters. They'll eat the tastiest and easiest thing they can find first. Now, this might be the first time I've ever seen red and yellow hued Amano shrimp before. I always thought they only came in that translucent gray with a hint of blue sometimes. So this is super cool. Perhaps this is a new thing breeders created? If you know anything about it, please drop a comment and let me know. <laughs> Look at this ghetto ass makeshift drip acclimation system I just came up with. Really playing 4D chess by myself here. Man, whatever, it works to a degree. Yo, man, just get out of the bag. Y'all really taking your sweet ass time with this. I don't have all day. I haven't eaten dinner yet. It's like 10.45 p.m. over here. Wow, look how beautiful these shrimp are. I'm amazed every time. Can't get sick of looking at them. This one's trying to cop a little limpet off the glass. Amano shrimp are definitely opportunistic foragers. It is rumored that if they get hungry enough, they'll go after smaller shrimp like cherries. This is not a joke. It's tough out here. It seems like each of them have taken on a different cleaning role. This one's cleaning the substrate, this one's doing the hydrocado, this one is taking care of the floaters, this guy's on the filter intake, and well, this guy's scratching his butt. Before we finish off here, I like to add a few dwarf water lettuce into the mix. Perhaps adding more shade and floaters to absorb excess nutrients will give the algae even more trouble. Anyways, that's about it for this update video. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and can't wait to update you on this later down the road and see how our battle with algae turns out. So make sure to subscribe up and turn those notifications on. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to get your hands wet.